Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis, and this is another edition of What the Fugue, where I talk about what's going on with me in my week of comics. This is really late. Partially the reason it's really late is the last three days, I've inevitably ended up on Hangouts as opposed to um, doing my No Fugues, you know, um, or What the Fugues, No Capes, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm spending the weekend catching up on all that thing. So hopefully you don't mind. Um, as far as what's going on with me this week in comics, uh, not any particular news in general um, that I really think I want to talk about. Um, like I said, I've been doing all these hangouts. They've been lots of fun. For those of you who've been watching them, awesome that you um, enjoy watching them. I know some of them have just been kind of, you know, Wednesday was just kind of a impromptu jump on um, uh, the cost of DC Comics. Um, uh, channel and just you know shot the breeze with him for an hour or whatever there's some fun good stuff in there uh, I, I guess to watch um, if you'd like to just listen to people ramble and then Thursday um, Scott constant Rob star he got a little bored and so we had a, a Thursday we're bored extravaganza hangout where we shot the breeze about all kinds of stuff um, that was fun at least fun for me doing the hangouts whatnot um, I hope everybody enjoys those you see me fighting a yawn I think I finally figured out what it is. Um, my nose is stuffed up a lot of the time, and I think that when I start doing these videos, I start talking a whole bunch, and I'm not drawing in enough oxygen. <laughs> and so, sooner or later, my body is forced to um, yawn to get that level of oxygen I need. That's the only thing I can think of. It's not that I'm like really tired or whatever, but Ghost Critic loves to um, put in, my, in the comments about the fact that you know I should be retitling all of my stuff, you know yawning this or whatever. And I shouldn't do a lot of that anymore, but I think that's a lot of it is. This time of the season is we're transitioning from um, spring into um, summer here. Tends to um, play havoc with my sinuses. And so I think that's what a lot of it is. Or that's the excuse I'm going to go with. Anyway, had those hangouts and then, um, of course, uh, Friday, you know, the the podcast, which I think we had some pretty good fun talking about some interesting stuff on there too. I just want to put out there, hey, if you're interested in being on the podcast, you know, get a hold of one of us, get a hold of me or Scott or Phil, more than likely. Phil's the person you really know. He's he's the one that runs the show. Get a hold of Phil. Even if you're camera shy, I'm thinking, even if you're camera shy, and I haven't really talked to anybody else about this, but even if you're camera shy, if you want to sit there and talk with us, and have your screen thing up so we can't see you. That'd even be cool if you want to come on and actually talk with us. If you're that um, shy about being on camera. Doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to the other guys. I don't know. You could ask them. Find out. Anyway, um, one of my last no capes I did, um, some people on there asked, um, um, What's what's my thoughts on what I think is going to be the next saga or the sleeper hit that um, that um, Peter Panzer Faust I think is the name of it is has turned out to be. Speaking of Peter Panzer Faust, I don't actually get that book. I wish I did. I wish I would have gotten it when it first came out. Um, more than likely, I'll be picking those up in trades because it sounds like a pretty awesome um, you know story idea that Peter Pan kind of set in World War One or World War Two and Hook is like a Nazi or something like that. Um, that sounds really interesting. There's some it really interesting ideas in that. Um, but, um, and I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I can't tell you. I can't tell you what the next saga is going to be. I was pretty sure the saga was going to be successful and I was really going to love the book. And the reason I knew that was because I knew the creators that were going to be on it beforehand are uh, Fiona Staples, her artwork, I, I thought it was awesome for a while. I, I just knew that it was just a matter of getting on the right book and she was just going to explode and be a huge thing. And I'm very happy to see that she is. And um, Brian K. Vaughn has, um, if you like his writing, his style of writing, has very few failures. And the last books that he's done have just been so incredibly solid that I, I just figured this was going to be really good. Was it going to be the mega hit that it's become? That's surprising to me. I just think it's awesome that that many people are willing to explore a book that you know is a little different and a little offbeat and and has some off-color humor in it and that sort of thing, and everybody be that excited about it. 
Um, so there's no way I can predict what the next that kind of thing is going to be. Uh, I can tell you what I'm interested in reading, what's going to be coming up that I'm interested in reading, and I can give you a guess as to how popular do I think it's going to be. I I'm really kind of surprised right now, to the truth, in the community how excited everybody is by Helheim, the um, Oni Press book with um, um, Colin Bunn and Jolene, you, I can't remember her last name right now, and I apologize for that. Um, I, I thought it was an okay book. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was like knock your socks off kind of thing. And a lot of the other guys in the community just think it's absolutely awesome. Um, I think Captain Strange Life even said, you know, it's potentially artistically, art wise, you know, it's the next, that she's the next Fiona Staples or whatever. And I, I don't know that I see that. I really like her art. Her art is very good. It has its own look to it to some degree. But it's not the unique stuff that, um, that, that I feel like Fiona says. But that's just a matter of subjective opinion on that. But anyway, so um, I want to talk about some books that are coming out that um, I'm really interested and excited in. They're going to be coming up. Um, there's some more, but I don't have enough real information on them to say, hey, this is, this is um, stuff that, I'm, you know, that maybe you should check out or maybe you want to check out. Um, books I know I'm, 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 I'm going to pick up. Um, one of them is a book called Lazarus. It's written by um, Greg Rutka, and it has art by um, Michael um, Lark. I'm a huge Greg Rutka fan. I, I don't really feel like the guy can do wrong. Even his stuff that's not as gripping is still so damn good. Um, the, the book is about a, um, a woman who has been genetically and biologically created. Um, she's referred to as the daughter of this house. Um, it's set in a near future dystopia where um, um, houses and corporations have kind of take over and kind of run the world. And they kind of fight against each other and, and war with each other to some degree or another. And she's kind of like a protector. She's a Lazarus is what they call them. Her job is to protect the house and the house's assets. And she does whatever her father wants. Of course, she's not really this guy's daughter. But he treats her that way, knowing that as long as he gives her his love, he can manipulate her however, she, however he wants to. Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting story. The art is very good in it. Um, is it going to explode? and be the mega hit, I don't know. But I think people will be talking about that book afterwards and not, not just me once it comes out. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that book. Um, I, I'm, I'm about whether or how, how big of a craze there's gonna be for it. Is there gonna be a fight for that first issue or whatnot? I'm not 100% sure on that. Next, um, East of West. It's a Jonathan Hickman um, book with uh, Mike uh, Dragola doing art. I'm not familiar with the, with the artist, really. Uh, Jonathan Hickman always creates a certain level of success, or has been lately. I'm really excited about the book. It's kind of a spaghetti western set in the near future kind of a look to it. Um, the kind of the premises, the four horse of the, four horse of the apocalypse have shown up. And their goal is to kill the President of the United States. And the United States is kind of split in half, it sounds like, kind of war in between each other. So um, I think that's going to sell well. Will it catch on right, you know, after the first issue? I don't know. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. A book I think has the potential to be really big. Um, Jupiter's Legacy. It's a Mark Millar and uh, Frank Quietly um, book. It's a book about the children of superheroes. These are kids that are second generation superheroes and really their parents have done all this wonderful great stuff. Um, so what is there for them you know as kids? What, what's the legacy? What, what's left? Um, sounds like a really good premise. Both creators are well known in the um, comics industry um, so I think that has a, a higher level of reassurance amongst everybody that 
you're going to get what you expect out of the book. And um, I, I think it'll generate a certain amount of excitement based on, you know, based on that. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be picking it up. I think that, um, like I said, I think it has the potential between those two creators um, to pull some more weight, uh, to get enough energy behind it, you know, to um, make it, you know, potentially a, a pretty big deal. Um, another book that's going to be coming up is um, 10 Grand, and that's by J. Michael Straczynski and Ben Temple Smith. Uh, the premise behind the book is there's this um, guy, he's been an enforcer for the mob his entire life, and he's been happy that he finds this woman. Her name is Laura, the love of his life. Um, he's going to get out of the business. He goes on this one last um, um, hit. The hit goes bad. The person he's trying to kill actually kills him and kills the love of his life, Laura. Um, as he's dying, an angel, or what seems to be an angel, comes to him and says, you know, look, you're dying. You're with The place you're going to, Lara's not going to be there. Lara's going to be in another place. And, and where you're going to, you don't want Lara to follow you. But look, if you do, if you come and work for me, if you do my work, and um, every, and I will bring you back to life. And every time you do my work, if you die, I will keep bringing you back to life. And during that brief moment, those five minutes while you're dead or whatever, you will get to see Lara. So as long as you continue to do my righteous work, you will get to continue to see Lara every time that you die. Um, that's potentially a really interesting premise. Um, I go back and forth on... Um, um, J. Michael Susinski, one that I like him as a writer. I like some of the stuff he writes. Sometimes I don't think he's faithful to whatever he's working on. He tends to back away from things sometimes, or at least with his um, the stuff he's writing for the big two lots of times. So a bit hesitant as far as that goes. Huge Ben Templesmith fan. Love his artwork. Ben Templesmith is a, has got a huge following of people. I think that 10 grand will be relatively big. It's going to be a big deal. People will be talking about it. People are going to be buying it because of the creators that are on it. Um, but Ben Templesmith sometimes is shaky working on stuff too. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, if they're both on their game and are there and are committed to doing the work, it, it, I think it's going to be awesome. And if they're not, it'll fall apart pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, what it is. Uh, there's a, a, a superhero comic that's going to be coming out that might be fun. It's called The Bounce. It's by Joe Casey um, and um, David Messina. Joe Casey is the guy who's also writing the current image book Sex, for whatever that's worth. Um, but The Bounce is about a teenage superhero. And the premise basically is Joe Casey, the writer, is gone. Okay, so ask yourself, seriously, if you had superpowers, what would you really do? And I answer honestly, not, don't, don't give us the, oh, I go out and save the world. But what would you honestly do? What would you honestly do if you had superpowers? You know, maybe you're a good person. Maybe you are going to be a hero and, and save people and whatnot. But are you really going to dedicate your entire life to just doing that? Um, no. And so I think this is going to answer those kinds of questions. It's going to talk about that kind of stuff. This is about a kid, a, a kid in his late teens that has superpowers, wants to be a superhero, but you know what? He's also a kid. He's lazy, you know, or, or uh, not lazy, unmotivated, like we all were as kids. Unmotivated, um, uninspired lots of times. And when we are inspired, it's not always by the right stuff. Um, so I think it's going to be, it's, it could be a cool comic. Um, Started seeing some ads for it show up in the back of some of the other image books. Um, but it looks like it could be some fun. It, um, I think it's going to play on some of the, the same stuff that like the older Invincible did back when it first started, where it had more to do with just being kind of a teen and being a hero on top of being a teen um, than the other trappings that um, Invincible has gotten into over the years. Um, that could be fun. Do I think that's going to be a huge smash hit? No. 
I don't, I don't think so at all. But I think it's going to be a fun alternative superhero book that that maybe looks at things a little more, a little more honestly and realistically as far as, you know, how would a youth um, address being a superhero? And finally, I know some other people on my comments from my no capes comment on the fact the five ghosts, the haunting of uh, Fabian Gray, um, and that's by um, Frank. Barbary and um, I can't remember who the artist is. It's a five issue miniseries. It's about a guy who's basically an adventurer treasure hunter. He comes across, comes upon an artifact and that artifact does something to him and suddenly he is haunted by five literary ghosts. And when these ghosts haunt him, he actually can um, tune into their abilities. One's a wizard, one's an archer, one's a vampire, One's a great detective. One's a samurai? Or something like that. You know, so you've got like Sherlock Holmes, Robin Hood, Dracula, some of that kind of stuff. Um, that's a five issue miniseries. That could be a lot of fun. Do I think that's going to be explode? No, I don't think it's going to explode either. Um, I haven't seen anything right now that, I'm, that I think is going to end up being some mega hit, I guess. But you know, a lot of it is, uh, is to some degree, is taking a risk. And, and then the next question I have around that is, you know, are you asking because you're, you want to speculate and get some copies of whatever's going to be the next great thing is in advance so then you can sell them on eBay for more money or whatever? Or are you just hoping that you don't miss whatever's going to be the next great thing that's just awesome and a lot of fun? I don't know what to tell you there. The only thing I can say is you do what I do, I guess, to some degree. You take a risk. You read about it. You read about the creators. What else have they done? And you weigh the whole thing out. Is it somebody you're interested in? <clears throat> Ten grand. I'm, I'm weighing it out. Um, I love Ben Temple Smith art. I'll probably pick up the book for the Ben Temple Smith art and hope that, that him and the writer stay on board for it to tell us a great story. I like the story premise. It could be really awesome. Um, some of them, like The Haunting of... Fabian Gray, The Five Ghosts, that one just sounds like a cool concept. I, I'm at least going to try a couple issues of it. I, I'm willing to, to fork out that $3 or whatever for that first issue to see what the adventure is going to be on it, um, see if it's something I'm interested in. Uh, because for me personally, I'm not so concerned about picking up the next great hit, but I am concerned about missing something that that is really good or I uh, really love. Um, granted, you know, companies like Image right now are cranking out a lot of number ones, so you can spend a lot of money buying a lot of number ones um, and end up with a bunch of crap too. So I mean, you have to kind of weigh all that stuff. But those are just some of the ones that I'm I'm interested in, which I guess is actually quite a few. Um, you know, that I'm willing to at least pick up the first couple issues of just to take a look and see what they're going to be like, because um, you never know. You never know what could end up being really awesome. Um, there's some books that I love that aren't aren't saga huge but I'm glad I picked them up I'm glad I heard about them and um, and am in, in embracing those like revival and some of the other books like that and stuff have just gotten really really good um, so that's some stuff at least from image that is coming up that I'm interested in. there's some stuff that's coming up from Dark Horse uh, but most of it is BPRD stuff I don't know anybody else who's reading a lot of the Hellboy things to be interested in all the little you know, extra stuff that's coming out by them, so I'll talk about that much. I'll, I'll try more on my What the Fuse to talk more about what's coming up, because some people also say, hey, you know, Travis, I didn't hear about this book until it was already out, and already, people already bought it, and, and 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 I can't find it now. You know, like like nowhere, I mean, I love that book, it's another image book, I love that book, and um, it seems like not a lot of people are reading it, <clears throat> a lot of people say they aren't reading it because they're having problems finding it. Um, so I'll try to make it a point of when I do a No Fuse, if I've heard about a book, I've gotten a sense of a book in the week. I'll try to make a point of talking about it on here to give you a heads up if, if you're not able or don't, or I'm following the same stream of stuff that I am to get a sense of what's out there, what's coming up that might pique your interest um, if that's why you're looking for the next, you know, next saga or, or sleeper hit. Um, but like I said, if I can really actually predict those things, um, I, I'd be in a completely different business. I'd obviously be an editor working for one of these companies, and um, uh, you know that would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess so. You know, that's what that is, um, and I think that's my uh, what the fugue for this time around. 
I think I've talked quite a bit. Um, there's something else I was going to talk about. Let's talk about something else. I'll make this thing long. If you choose to watch the whole thing, that's fine. If you don't, you don't. Um, I, I do reviews, reviews, where really I'm just talking about the books. And sometimes I just feel like I'm going through the motions of, you know, here's the book, blah, blah, blah. If you ever want to know more about a book I'm talking about, uh, let me know. Should I be talking more in depth about a book when I pick up, when I pick up a Hellblazer and I start talking about it? Should I, should I give you more plot, less plot. Um, sometimes I'm not 100% sure what I should be talking about or what I shouldn't be talking about when, when I'm talking about a book. Um, lots of times I just try to concentrate on whatever interests me about the book. Um, but I want to give you guys enough information because I know sometimes if you're not reading the book, I can be talking about stuff and you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, so I guess I'm never 100% sure exactly how much background I should be giving. Um, or do I quit doing the reviews all the time? Um, you know, because I read a lot of books. You know, do you want to hear about all of them? Do you want to hear about some of them? You know, just tell you about the ones I like. Um, at one point when I was just doing a blog, I would only write about the ones I liked and I wouldn't say anything at all about the bad ones. The theory, give attention to the good ones. And, and if you are silent about the bad ones, then more people are, are less interested in the bad ones and focus on the good ones. But at the same time, it seems like if I'm going to talk about comics and comics in general and what I'm reading and stuff, I, and I need to talk about the ones I don't like too um, and why I don't like them. You know, what is it about the book that I don't like? You know, don't make that personal. Don't, don't go, you know, I hate this writer. This writer is stupid or whatever. Um, that's, not, that's not helpful for anybody but explain why it is that you don't like that writing style or you don't like the way they addressed whatever or you don't like this art because you don't like you know it's static or whatever the issues are and stuff um so i'm just kind of wondering wondering if i should be doing something different um my comic books i i've discovered that i order enough comic books that my comic books i've got them set on a weekly basis but they still come relatively late i actually get them the next week even though they're weekly um because they get sent by FedEx and FedEx mails my comics really slowly. Um, if my comics are under three pounds, I get them weekly, and I get them early. I get them in two days, going through the post office. But if it's over three pounds, then it goes FedEx, and it takes uh, almost six days to get them. So that's kind of a bummer. So I may go back to every two weeks instead of weekly because of the weekly thing isn't going to pan out. I might as well save myself the extra, you know, seven dollars in shipping. Um, I can put that towards books or whatever else that's out there and stuff, but yeah, um, I think that's it. Now that I've said that a couple times, I think that's it. Everybody, take care of yourself out there. Um, love watching all your videos. Still trying to battle the whole subscription feed for YouTube. It it sucks. Um, um, Sparrow Dot Geek. Um, gave some good suggestions on how to stretch your subscription list out longer um, and have a load button at the bottom so you can see more of that stuff. If you're like me and you don't watch a ton of videos every single day, but you kind of build them up for the week and then watch a bunch on the weekend like I do, um, that'll help you out. As, as far as that goes, um, you know, I appreciate watching everybody's videos. I, I appreciate you guys that crank out the videos and stuff like that, um, but make sure you take care of business. Make sure you take care of the business outside of this community because the community isn't going anywhere and we're not going to die if we don't see a video from you or see your face every day or all that kind of stuff. Make sure you take care of business. And when I say business, that's you know the work, the family, whatever else you need to because if you don't have that stuff together, then um, it, it affects this sooner or later, right? And I want to see all of you around happy and healthy. So take care of everything. Take care of yourselves. Have a great one, guys.